Hey everyone, welcome back to Sakura Dev channel. And in today's video, I'm going to show you three real use cases of how JavaScript coding can simplify and enhance your code in your React and Nexus project. So without extra explanation, let's dive in. All right, so what is the JavaScript coring? Well, coring is a technique in which a function is broken down into a series of smaller and specialized functions. So instead of taking multiple arguments at once, a coret function takes one argument at a time and then returns a new function that takes the next argument, finally resulting in a single final function. So here, as you can see, we have a add function. It takes two arguments and then returns the sum of them. All right. Now the coret version of this function can be something like this. We have a coret function that takes the first argument and then it returns the second function, which takes the second argument. And here in the last function, we can access to all arguments of all functions. So here, as you can see, we call the create add function and pass the first argument. So we get the second function, which here we're going to call it add two. And then here in the next line, we just call the add to function that we've got here and pass the second argument. And it will add it up to the first argument, which is two here, resulting output of five. So in this way, you can create a current function. You can also call the current function and pass all the parameters at once. But for each parameter, you need to use a pair of parentheses. So this is going to be first function. And in the second function, you'd pass the second argument. And now let me show you the real use cases of JavaScript coring that you can use in your Nexus and React project. So here, let's say you want to create a fetch data function that takes three parameters, the base URL, the method, and finally the route of your API. So you can create a coret function fetch data that takes the base URL, and then it returns the second function that takes the method of your request, and then it returns the third function, which takes the route of your API. And here, as you can see, it logs a message to your console, something like fetching base URL slash route. And then it called the fetch function with the base URL slash your route, and then pass the config object providing the method inside it. So now here you can create a fetch API function with the fetch data function and pass your base URL into it. And now we can use this fetch API function anytime, anywhere in your application. And you don't want to specify your base URL every time you want to use your fetch API function. Your fetch API function is actually contains your base URL embedded into it as its first argument. You can go further and create a get API function from the fetch API that you've got here and specify your method, which is going to be get here. All right. So anywhere in your application, you can use your get API and you just need to specify the route of your API. Right. So now let me get to a Nexus project and show you how we can use this pattern to create a custom fetch API. So here I get to a Nexus application. And here, as you can see, we have a fetch.ts file here. We have the fetch API here. And also we have the get API here, which is the fetch API function with its parameter is set to get. So we return this function in the get API. And now we can go to my homepage and let's say you want to fetch the user's get API from your backend API. So here I'm gonna just say const res and set it to await get API and only pass the route segment in our backend API. It is going to be users in our example. So it actually fetches something like this, get base URL and then slash users. All right, now let me just log this response here. So first let me resolve this. I'm gonna set it to users object and set it to await res.json, okay? And simply log the users into our console. All right, so now let's run the application here. Let's refresh the page and let's get back to our application and open up the console. You can see the list of users here and it says fetching this base URL and then slash user. So this is the first example of creating a custom fetch API with JavaScript coring functions. It gives you a more reusable and modular and also cleaner fetch API. So now let's go on to the next example, which is about handling events. So let's say that we have a button and we have a onClick event on that button. And for the onClick event, we need to pass a callback, which takes E 
and here we call the handle click function and this handle click function takes two arguments the first one is going to be item and the second one is the event so we will console like item and also the event type so here as you can see inside the callback we call this function as these two arguments item one for example and event to this on click event so now let's go back to our next JS application and here we have another page component you can see the handle click event it takes two arguments item and the event and for each of these two buttons we just pass a callback function and then inside it we call the handle click function so now let's transform this handle click function to a create function and see how it can actually improve your code so here first let me turn this function to a current function it should take only one parameter and then it should return another function which takes the event all right so now the handle click function only takes one argument the item and then it returns the second argument which is a function that only takes event so now here in the on click event of each button we can directly call the handle click function we don't need to pass a callback so handle click and we only need to specify the item which is going to be something like item one and for the second button just do the same just directly use the handle click function and pass the item to it which is going to be item two all right so why we don't need to pass a callback here because the handler click function returns their callback for us and that callback also access to the item parameter of the first function let me get back to the browser and go to the events handling route okay we have two buttons here let me open up the console if i click on the item one we can get the item and also we can get the event type which is a click if i click on the item two we can get the item two here so let me get back here and you can see it is cleaner modular and more reusable to use javascript coring when you are going to deal with handling events in your react and next.js application now let me get back to the browser and let me show you the third example of using javascript coring inside our next.js or react application for example let's say we have a form and this example is without coring so we have a form here and a form state that contains only name and email inside we have two inputs on our form and an unchanged event of each of these inputs in order to set the corresponding property inside the form state here we need to pass a callback on the unchanged event it takes the event and then call the set form state which we've got here and then spread the previous state and only set the name property and set it to e that we've got here in the callback the target dot value we're going to do the same for the second input but how we can improve it javascript core it functions so here let me scroll down a little bit here we have the form state and we have the two inputs here we are going to create an updated field which is a core function it takes the set state function and then it returns the second function which only takes the field name and then finally it returns a function that takes an event and inside the third function we call the set state parameter function which we've got in the first function and spread the previous state and set the field name which we've got in the second function and set it to events which we've got in the third function the target that value so as you can see this function which is the third function it is exactly of type that the unchanged event of the input can take so here inside our component we just create a handle input function and call the updated field function our core function and we just need to pass the update state function the set form state function actually and here inside the unchanged event of our inputs we just call this function and pass the second argument of the code which is the field name here and it returns this function which can be used as the callback for the unchanged event it returns a function that takes an event and then inside that function we are going to update our state so let me go back to the next JS and see how we can use it in action as you can see we have a state updater page and here we have the form state type which only contains name and email and here we have a state of type form state and as i said it only contains name and email inside it so here as you can see in order to update the first input which is going to be name we need to pass a callback that contains e and then inside the callback we need to call the set form state spread the previous state 
and then initialize the name property with e.target.value. All right, we're gonna do the same for the second input and only set the email to the e.target.value. So now let me get back to our browser and just copy this function, which is our correct function, get back here and paste it here. Okay. Now our updated field is a correct function. As I said, it takes the set state, returns the function that takes the field name. And finally, it returns a function that takes the event. And inside the event, we are going to call the set state function that we've got in the first function and set the field name that we've got in the second function to the event that target that value. So as you can see, this function is exactly of type that unchanged props can take. So here we are going to create a handle input change. So const handle input change and set it to update field current function. And we only need to pass the set form state function. Okay. Now here it returns actually this function. So we only need to specify the field name here. Instead of this callback, we just call the handle input change and specify the fields that we are going to update, which is going to be name. And here, as you can see, it returns this function, which takes the event and set the name property to the event dot target dot value. As you can see, it's much more cleaner and uh, we don't need to pass a callback at all. All right. Now let's do it with the second unchanged event. Just pass the handle input change and pass the name of the field that we are going to update, which is going to be email. That's it. And as you can see, our code is now more reusable, more modular and cleaner. So now let's go to the browser to test this. I go to the state updater. And as you can see, we have two inputs here, name and email. We put some gap between those two inputs, X gap five. Okay. Now we have the two inputs here. So if I open up the console and before doing that, let me just console log the form state. Okay. Now get back here, go to the console, clean up the console. And here, let me pass something inside the form state. You can see the name is set accordingly. Now let me put something inside the email. And here, as you can see, the email is set accordingly. So yeah, that's it. How we can use JavaScript coring in our Next.js and React projects. And I provide you with three real world examples. I can also provide another video for using the JavaScript coring inside a Nest.js backend application. It's a little more complex, but when using JavaScript coring with your Nest.js, you can see you have a much cleaner and reusable code with your Nest.js application. So if you want me to create another video for JavaScript coring use cases in the Nest.js backend application, please let me know in the comment section below and I will create that video. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support me on YouTube. I really appreciate your support. This really matters to me. So have a nice time and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.